Hi, I'm Lane from Anything Scout, and today we're here to talk about inspecting and servicing your differential. <laughs> For tools needed today, uh, we like to use just rubber gloves. You don't have to. You can use any kind of glove you want. You will need a crescent wrench, usually, uh, depending on the plug that's on your differential to check your fluid level at the end. Uh, I like to use a screwdriver and a hammer sometimes. Once you get the bolts out on the diff cover, you'll see that it's easy to kind of just tap them off. Uh, typically, the bolts holding your diff cover on are going to be a half inch and a little gun. It just helps you out. Uh, these are two different style gaskets. Um, you only need one, obviously. This is your regular paper style gasket. Comes with a lot of rebuild kits, or you can buy them cheap. We like to use this style, reusable lube locker. They're very durable, reusable, and don't ever leak, hardly. And lastly, probably just a flashlight, so you can look inside. It'll help you out. All right, next thing we're gonna do, get yourself a nice pan of any kind. Don't want to make a big mess. And we're going to pull the bolts out of our diff cover. It's a little easier for me because there's no body on the vehicle. Now this is a Dana 44 rear axle. Um, the tag is down here, you can't see it yet really. So I don't even know what gears are in this. Um, but we'll show you all about that. So we're gonna go ahead and take the cover off. Removing all these bolts. Being careful not to damage the brake line. That is more often than not going to be attached to one of these bolts with a little hanger. Now, once you get all these loose, typically the silicone or gasket that's on there is gonna be a little stuck. Now, I haven't been in this one yet, so we will find out. And like normal, it's stuck. So we'll go ahead and grab hammer and a screwdriver or a chisel or a small pry bar or a punch, whatever you prefer. The only thing you wanna be careful about is you wanna try not to beat up the cover or the surface of the diff too bad. You don't wanna gouge it, scratch it. Anything to keep that sealing surface from not working very good later on. As you can see, it doesn't take very much. And I like to leave one bolt, one bolt in just so the cover doesn't fall down and splash all over. And now is a good time to start looking at that fluid that's coming out. You can tell a lot about the fluid, whether or not you have bearing material, uh, how old it is, how dirty it is, maybe if there's water in there, if it looks milky. It can help you out and tell you the condition before you get to see anything. So we'll go ahead and we're gonna take that last bolt out. And another thing to note is sometimes you'll see differential covers have been repaired, whether that be because the differential blew out in the past, or maybe this bung got stripped out so they decided to cut it out and put a new one in. Rig job stuff, we don't like that. We won't reuse that. Now that we have the cover off, it's always nice to kind of look in here. You can see the line of the fluid where it's been sitting over the years. And a lot of times you'll see it's all rusty where the fluid isn't. This doesn't look very rusty, so that's a good sign. Not a lot of metal on the plug. Typically these are a magnet. Not a lot of stuff there. The fluid actually looks pretty, it's not broke down. It's not clean, but it's not broke down. It's probably just old. Now that we have it open, you can tell that this is just your typical open differential. It's not a power lock or a track lock, limited slip style. It's just an open diff. Um, if you have like a track lock set up, which is going to be a little bit different, the center section here, but you're going to want to look for damage, like cracks in these areas, the corners of the carrier. That's typical. Um, we'll go ahead and roll forward here just a uh, we'll roll backward here in just a minute because I don't want to knock the table over but 
you want to get a good view, you want to check out your ring gear, you want to kind of see if you can see a good wear pattern on that. You want to make sure there's no rust, no pitting, no nothing broken off. This is actually looking really good so far. Um, you're going to want to get a good look at your spider gears. And I'll bring the rear end up and rotate the wheels so we can see that here in a minute. Get a good look at your spider gears in here. And then we're going to clean this up and double check everything and go from there. Now that we have the axle jacked up, jack stands underneath for safety, um, we're going to go ahead and we're going to clean this out. Um, as you can see, just your typical open differential. Spin one wheel, the other wheel stays locked. Spin the other wheel, this one would stay locked. Um, so what we got going on here is just typical brake clean, any kind, any brand. And we're going to just kind of going to hose her down. And you want to probably get some rags or something along those lines. Get it down in here and clean out this stuff down here. There's usually a little bit of sludge, a little buildup, residue, dirt. Sometimes you'll see metal collected down here. This is actually looking pretty darn good. Um, that's a good indicator of how the differential is doing. Uh, you can see these gears look pretty good. There's not a lot going on with these spider gears. They're not all jagged. They're not worn down. Sometimes they'll be pitted from sitting. And all that stuff can contribute to noise or ca catastrophic failure. Either way, um, ring gear looks good. Now, there's a tag on the differential. That's going to tell you the number of teeth on your ring gear and the number of teeth on your pinion, which is up front here. And with the number of that and the number of that, it'll tell you your gear ratio, which is a big, a big deal. Um, one thing, without taking the center section out, you're not going to be able to see your side bearings. You could take these caps off, pull your axle shafts out, and you can pull your center section out. But this is just a service. Um, we're not gonna get that deep into it. If we're not concerned about a noise, we aren't gonna do it. Um, typically on our builds, yes, we always do. But for you at home in your garage, this is how you're gonna do it. Um, now we'll go ahead and show you the cleanup of the pan along with this surface. All right, well, here we have our pan, or a pan, I should say. Um, if you weren't already running a lube locker style or just a paper gasket, you're more than likely going to have some kind of residue, as you can see on this. Um, you're going to have a little bit of rust, sure, but you're going to have old silicone or something along those lines. Um, a lot of people use, like, this silicone gasket maker. It's not bad stuff. It's not how we like to do it, but it does work. Um, what we like to do is either, you know, carefully use a, a razor blade, try and get this material off. You don't want to scratch real deep. You'll uh, ruin that mating surface. Um, another good tool is if you have one of these, um, little die grinder, put a little 3M roll lock pad on it, a soft one, and you can just buzz that stuff off real quick. It works exactly the same right on the differential housing. Just keep in mind any debris that's coming off of this is going to be landing in and around the housing. So you'll have to re-clean everything if you do it post remove, you know, your cl first clean. And here we have our tag, as I mentioned earlier, that was attached with one of the bolts in the differential cover. As you can see, it says 4314 and then 307 underneath it. Now 43 is the number of teeth on your ring gear and 14 is the number of teeth on your pinion. So that's a good way to find out what gearing you have in your rear end is you can divide the number of teeth on your pinion or excuse me, the number of teeth in your ring gear by the number of teeth on your pinion. Now here we have a power lock differential, not like the open conventional differential that we just showed you before. Um, but these are bearings to keep in mind that if you're hearing noise or anything like that, 
you're going to want to go in further and inspect that kind of thing. When we're just doing a service, we didn't see any terrible damage in the fluid. We're not experiencing the problem. We're looking at it that way. Um, the ring gear looked good. The spider gears look good. We're going to go ahead and call ours good, get everything cleaned up, and we're going to put it back together and refill it. I also just wanted to mention that if you search along the side of your ring gear, you'll typically find this number at the end, same as the tag. 44-9 on this particular example, which is going to be a little bit lower than what we've been looking at, but it's that same ratio we talked about earlier. All right, now that we've got our cover and our differential all cleaned up, we're going to go ahead, reinstall. Now, if we were using our true lube locker gasket like we like to, we would just set it right on. Line it up with your bolt holes, obviously. And you're going to set that right back up in there. Now, like I said, a lot of guys like to use a paper gasket like this example I'm using and silicone, or they like to use just silicone. Um, there's a million different ways you can do it. Everybody thinks they're right. We just like to use the lube locker gaskets and they always seem to work. They have a very good track record. Um, those are available on our website, by the way. Um, We'll get some bolts started back in this, get it all snugged up, and then we're ready to fill. All right, now that we've confirmed everything's all right with our differential during our service, we got the cover back on and we're gonna go ahead and refill it. Now, there's not too many tricks to this other than remove your drain plug. Uh, this happens to be a just square drive. Um, a lot of times they're not protruding, they're going into the plug and you can use a sometimes three eighths drive, sometimes half inch drive ratchet. Um, go ahead and pull that out. Now we've got air buckets of 80 90 weight gear oil and you know you have enough fluid when you get to the bottom of your plug hole basically and you'll see it start to run out all right so now that you can see we've got fill level up to here we're draining down a little bit we're okay to go ahead and put our plug back in and we will tighten that in a minute. One good thing to keep in mind is if you've done any full rebuild or anything to your outer wheel bearings, um, stuff like that, you do need to have axle in these tubes or axle grease in these tubes that gets to those bearings. So it's not a bad idea if you're refilling your differential to go ahead and angle one side up for a few minutes let some excess drain down to each end. So then go ahead and do the opposite end afterward. Um, and then recheck this, and it may have gone down just a touch. Uh, that way you ensure that those bearings are gonna be lubed at all times. All right, so now that we're all done, um, rear end should be good to go. Uh, we'll do one more quick once over of the steps. Basically, we just remove the differential cover. Um, we cleaned up our differential, cleaned up differential cover. We inspected our uh, ring gear, our spider gears, peeked in underneath, got to look at the pinion, um, made sure that we didn't have any weird gear pattern or gear wear or pitting or broken pieces. Um, we inspected the fluid to make sure nothing had gone wrong there. We looked at the housing the best we could, made sure it wasn't all pitted out or anything like that. Uh, we went ahead and reinstalled our cover, uh, double checked our fluid level by filling it, tilting it, pulling the plug again, and topping it off. And that's pretty much all there is to it. Uh, differentials are, can get very complicated. Um, even just the gear ratio aspect can confuse some people. It's not that complicated if you know what you're talking about. Get a little research done. Uh, ask somebody who knows. that can help you out, but uh, 
just on servicing an axle, that's about all you need to know. In your home garage, it's pretty simple. And again, I'm Lane from Anything Scout. Uh, go ahead and check us out on YouTube. Like, share, and subscribe. Um, and if you need any help with your vehicle at home, get on our website, check out our parts list. We got most of the stuff you need. Thanks.